Okay, so I think I found a little bit easier way to remember the uh, circle of Willis without trying to remember this story about a spider lives in his shoe and is wearing this kind of hat and has whatever else and related to this person and that person. So here it goes. First we'll draw two lines coming down. We'll draw a triangle. And then another two lines coming down with two side branches. So this here is your, is your vertebral artery. Vertebral artery comes off the subclavian artery. And that's the beginning of the circle of Willis, sort of, sort of. So what I like to do, and here's the basilar artery. So what I like to do first is just write off to the side cerebellar. or the cerebellum, which is in the back of the brain. And then up here, the cerebral. Because it's so easy to get these confused. So you've got to remember cerebellar is in the back and then call everything accordingly. Now, everything anatomically has uh, some variance, but typically uh, off the vertebral artery, you have one branch. Your second branch of the uh, uh, portion is uh, there and the third branch is there. So you have three branches in the cerebellar region. The way I remember these is SAP. S is for superior cerebellar artery. This one is your ICA. Anterior inferior cerebellar artery and then your PICA. Now coming over here, just to keep it aesthetically pleasing, you have three more arteries up here that we have to name. This is one artery here, and that's your, uh, well, I'll, I'll draw them first. Here's your second one, and then your third one is this guy right here. So the way that I remember this is AMP, just like cyclic AMP. So we have our anterior cerebral artery. We have our middle cerebral artery and our posterior cerebral artery. Now the only things we have left is our internal carotid, which is there and there. The internal carotid gives off the MCA. And uh, our communicating arteries, which is your anterior is here. And your posterior communicating is the section between the posterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery. Now that's important to remember where it is because oftentimes that's a test question. And, um, and it's not between the basilar and the posterior uh, cerebral artery. Uh, oftentimes it's hard to remember where the posterior communicating is because in this area you have a lot of, uh, a lot of confusion when you look at the structures anatomically. But if you can remember this in your brain, which should be easy, you'll have an easier uh, time figuring out what is what. Uh, that's the circle of Willis that's pretty much done, but just of note, uh, some people may find it good to know that the first branch off the internal carotid is the ophthalmic artery. And the ophthalmic artery goes to the optic disc. It innervates the optic disc. It's considered a true end artery because it doesn't have any anastomoses. Uh, it's used by physicians to look at the eye in the ophthalmic examination and uh, pick up other pathologies, particularly in diabetic patients and so forth. So uh, that's an important thing to know as well. Um, that's it. A couple other things we can go into, but that's, that's, uh, that should be good. Hopefully that is of some use to you.